Hi friends, my name is Akhil Ahmed and in this particular video tutorial I will show you how to migrate data from HubSpot to Snowflake. So the agenda of today's video tutorial is that first we will see how to fetch the data from the HubSpot and then we will see how we can use the derived column transformation to add some new columns into the data flow and then we'll insert the data into the Snowflake. So let's create the SSIS package to do this kind of migration. So for doing the migration from the HubSpot to the Snowflake, we will be using the SSIS data flow components from DevArt. They offer the wide variety of components for moving data from different kind of sources into the different kind of destinations. You can download their trial version for 30 days and then you can see like if you like the component then you can purchase their license. You can use the coupon code learn SSIS 10 to get the 10% discount on their product. So let's create the SSIS package. Alright, so this is my blank SSIS package that we are going to use today. So first of all, let me log into the HubSpot and let me also log into the Snowflake so that I can show you the data there. And then we'll write the data migration code inside the SSIS package to migrate the data. So let me log into the HubSpot so I can type HubSpot login and then I can click on this particular icon, the first icon there. I have actually created my account with my Gmail address. So I will click on this option sign into the Google and then I can select the my email address and it will let you log into the HubSpot. Okay, so I'm logged into their website and then if I move my cursor onto the this contact page so I can see the contacts there. So for example, if I click on this one, then it will display the different contacts in my account. So right now I have two contacts, Brian and Maria. These are the, uh, you know, two sample contacts. Those were added by the HubSpot. If you want to see some other details, you can see the emails as well. So you can see the products as well. So if I click on the products, then it will display you the available products. I actually created some products by myself like this keyboard, CPU, mouse, laptop, all these product I added my myself. So these are the names of the product, their SKU, their unit price and the create date. Okay. So I want to migrate the data from the product table into the Snowflake. Okay. So now let me log into the Snowflake as well. So I can type Snowflake login and then I can actually uh, click this one, login Snowflake web user interface. I can actually click on this one start for free. I have already an account on the Snowflake. So I think uh, there should be an option from the login sign into an existing account. Yeah. So I can click on this one QC 35196. Okay. And then this is my account sign in. Alright, so I'm logged into the Snowflake. Now, if you want to use the SQL queries, you know, to pull data from the Snowflake database or update data or, you know, maybe create the tables. So you can click on this option query data. Okay. However, you can also see the available databases under data option. So if you click on the data option, then you can see the databases here. So these are the two default databases. Okay. And if you, for example, expand one of the database, then you can see the schemas there. And if you expand one of the schema, then you can see the tables listed there for that particular schema. So for example, this is the customer table. So if you want to preview the data from the customer table, you can click on the data preview and you can see the data available in that particular table. Okay. Uh, because I want to insert some data into the database and I want to create the database and the table. So I will click on the snowflake icon here. Okay. And then I can click on the query data option. So inside the query data option, you can actually write your queries. So for example, if I expand this particular database and then if I expand the schema and if I expand the table and if I need to select the data from the customer table, so I can click on these three dots and place name in the editor. So it will actually put the name of the database and the schema and the table here. So I can write a query like select a star from and then I can select this particular query and 
execute this query so it will actually execute the query and it will fetch the data from their system all right so the query is running absolutely fine now these are the two system databases like uh, snowflake and snowflake sample data so let me create a new database as well because uh, for example if you will try to create a table here then it won't allow you to create the table because this is a read only database so i have a uh, for example create table statement here so let me show you what i'm talking about so for example if i try to uh, you know create the table here then it will say that this session does not have a current database use current database okay so that's fine let me select this particular database okay this one so that's fine now i have a database now let me rerun this particular query okay so it's saying that creating table on shared database is not allowed okay so that's why we need to create a new database here so to create a new database you can write the query create database and then you can give the database name so for example i want to create a database with the name is testing so i can execute this query and then database testing successfully created so now on the left side these are the two databases as of now so if i refresh it then it should display another database testing database okay so if i expand this one so i can see a public schema there okay so i can create a table inside the public schema for example so yeah so this one is automatically selected testing dot public so i can actually create a table here let me execute this particular query so it's saying that table product successfully created so if i refresh the tables again so right now it's not displaying it so what i can do i can actually refresh it again yeah so the table is there products table and place name in the editor okay i think the create table was selected so that's why it wiped it out okay i can actually now see the data in the table so right now the table is empty because we have not inserted any data into this particular table so what we will do we will actually move the data from the products table from hub sport into the snowflake okay into this particular table products table so that's okay now let's move to the ssis to create the workflow which can actually move data from hub sport to the snowflake so for moving the data we always use the data flow task so i can just simply drag and drop the data flow task from the toolbox into the control flow window now i can double click the data flow task and then we can use the hub spot source so i can type hub spot so i can simply drag and drop the devart hub spot source into the data flow task now right click the devart hub spot source and now from the hub spot connection we need to create a new connection manager all right so under the authentication type uh, we can use the refresh token option and we can click on the web login so it will automatically log in to their website and i can select the account the account name is abc and i can select choose account so it's saying that Uh, connecting to the devart ssis data flow so i can click on the connect app so the authorization is successful now i can go back and i can click on test connection so the it's successfully connected so i can click okay and okay so now it will fetch all the tables from the hub spot okay okay so we can select the data from the products table so i can just simply uh, click on the products table and if you want to see the different columns so these are the different columns okay if you want to see data from all columns so you can simply drag and drop the products table into the query window and you can click on the preview data option so it will actually display you the data from the different columns so here you can see all the different columns available okay so i can close this one but i want to fetch the data only from some specific column so i have this query so i can simply use this query to select the data for the id name description unit price and then then the created at okay so now if i click on the preview data then it will display only those columns which i have used in the select query so i can close this one 
then I can close this one as well. So our Devot HubSpot source component is successfully configured. Now if you want to add some columns into the data flow, then we can use the drive column transformation. So I can simply drag and drop the drive column transformation into the data flow. And now I can connect the HubSpot source with the drive column. And then I can double click the drive column transformation. So suppose I want to add the created by and the machine name. So there are some system variables for the created by. Created by means the username. So I can simply drag and drop it into the expression. Okay. And then there is a machine name. So I can also drag and drop the machine name as well into the expression. So right now the data type for them is nWerker18 and nWerker15. However, I want to give the Worker100. So I can go to the type cast and from there we can use the dt underscore str method and the length I can give as 100 okay and the code page I can give as 1252 okay this is for nc latin i okay and same one I can simply copy here and paste it here so now the data type for both the columns is worker 100 and I can give the column name so this one I can give as created by and another one I can give as machine name okay so this is good so I can click ok and this will add two new columns into the data flow so now to insert this data into the snowflake we need to use the snowflake components snowflake destination components so I can just simply drag and drop the devout snowflake destination into the data flow task and then I can connect the drive column with the devout snowflake destination and now we need to make a connection to the snowflake so right click on the connection manager pane, new connection and then we can select the connection manager for the snowflake so this is the connection manager click add alright so here we need to provide the details like the domain name so the domain name link you will get into the email when you will create an account on the snowflake okay so I have that details with me so I can actually get it from here uh, this is the URL okay so I can paste it here now I need to provide the user ID so my user ID is this one sadavjahan33 okay and I need to provide my password as well so I can cancel this one and I can copy the password from here and I can provide the password now the database name we can get from the this link like the database name is testing of course that we created so I can copy the database name from here warehouse we can leave as blank and the schema is the public schema because here you can see that testing dot public and you can see the public schema here so I can type public there okay and yeah, I think that's it and then I can click on the test connection so you can see that the connection is successful so I can click OK and then I can click OK. Now I can right click the snowflake destination and configure this one. From the connection manager I can select the snowflake connection manager. I can go to the component properties and uh, then I can click the object name. So inside the object name I should be able to select the products public dot products table. Okay. So that's good. Now I can go to the column mappings. And you can see all input columns have been mapped with the destination column. So that's good. Now I can click on the OK. So this is successfully configured. However, we are seeing an error here. So I can click here. It's saying bulk file storage must be specified if bulk insert equal to true. So it seems like we have selected the bulk insert. OK. However, we have not specified the bulk file storage. So ideally this should be configured either to the Amazon S3 or the Azure. So for example, if I select the Azure, then we need to provide some Azure storage account details. Okay. But right now I don't have the Azure storage account detail. So that's why I will select to none. And instead of the bulk insert for now, to keep it simple, I will use the normal insert. Okay. So I will set it to false and then I can click on OK. So now the error has gone. And now our SSIS package is ready to fetch the data from the hub spot and insert into the snowflake. So I can click on the start button so that the package can start and it can do the data migration. 
All right, so you can see that the data migration from the HubSpot to the Snowflake is successful. Now we can go back to the Snowflake and we can rerun the query to see whether the data was migrated or not. So I can rerun the query. So now you can see that the data migration is successful and it has migrated data from the HubSpot into the Snowflake. Okay, all data got migrated. The first few columns are from the HubSpot and the last two columns they were from the Drive column transformation. So guys this was how you can migrate data from the HubSpot to the Snowflake and without writing even a single line of code for like for making the connections to the HubSpot or for making the connections to the Snowflake. It was so simple like you just need to provide your credentials and then you were able to make the connection there. Otherwise if you had to write the code for example in C sharp then it can take you know a lot of time to write the code and to get the data but with the devout components it's so easy that you can simply make the connections and you can just simply drag and drop the components and you can make use of them so i think that's it for today's video thank you guys for watching the video and if you like the video then please click the like button do subscribe to our channel press the bell icon and click on all so that you will be notified every time i put a new video thank you so much